Good morning. How's everybody doing? Good, all right. Uh, welcome to the White House. It's so great to have everyone here today. My name is Kyle Learman. I serve as the President's Liaison to Young Americans here in the White House Office of Public Engagement. Uh, welcome to the White House Summit on uh, Millennial Outreach and Engagement, where we're going to be talking about how we can spread the word about the Affordable Care Act in this upcoming open enrollment period. Uh, we have an incredible group of people here in the room today, and we have folks watching online at whitehouse.gov slash live. Um, for folks tweeting and using social media throughout the day, uh, we're using hashtag healthy adulting. Um, so feel free to use that uh, throughout the day. Um, to kick things off, uh, we are going to bring up Jen Mishery, who is the executive director of Young Invincibles. And as Jen comes up, I just want to say a huge thanks uh, to Young Invincibles for their partnership on this event and all the work that they do around ACA enrollment, uh, especially with their focus on young people. They have been uh, incredible partners uh, since long before uh, the ACA was even passed, and we're excited to be partnering with them on today's event. So Jen, come on up. All right, thank you, Kyle, and thank you so much to the White House for hosting today's Millennial Outreach and Engagement Convening. My name is Jen Mishori, and I'm the Executive Director of Young Invincibles. We're a national advocacy organization working in cities across the country to expand economic opportunity for young people. Together with many of the wonderful partners here in the room today, we've spent the last six years connecting young people to health coverage uh, provided through the Affordable Care Act. Uh, in this time, we've seen tremendous gains for young people. So we know that 5.2 million young adults have gained coverage since 2013, 5.2 million. And we also know that nearly half of the newly insured in the past year were young people as well. But we also know there's still a lot of work to do. So 15% of young adults are still uninsured, and that is twice uh, the national average. Um, and we know that millennials of color are uninsured at much higher rates as well. We've worked with thousands of young people across the country, and we hear the same thing. Young people value and want health coverage um, for their well-being, for their financial security, but they also want to know, what is it going to cost me? Um, and we find that there's a real lack of awareness about options to reduce cost, and that's actually a huge barrier to getting covered. At the same time, we also know that young people disproportionately benefit from the ACA's premium tax credit. So if you're a young person who's working, who's uh, in school, uh, who's maybe working part-time, if you're a young, young parent, if you're a young person who's low or moderate income, the premium tax credit can lead to substantially lower monthly payments. And that's going to be a big focus of ours this year, making sure young people know about those cost reductions. Um, so to bridge that uh, uh, knowledge gap on affordability, we've launched a new campaign called uh, Hashtag Healthy Adulting. It's also the hashtag for today's event, so please join us on social media. And it's an initiative that's designed to reach the remaining uninsured young adults and empower those uh, who have gained insurance to actually use it, to go out, access the preventive care, access the benefits that they've signed up for. Um, and it's critical that we continue to engage young adults around the value of health coverage, but also target communities that often face the greatest barrier to coverage. So underserved populations like Latino, LGBT, and African-American young people. We're also working with the White House, HHS, and partners across the country to host the fourth National Youth Enrollment Day. That's going to be on December 10th this year, so a little bit early. Uh, and we'll coordinate hundreds of events across the country connecting millennials to coverage. Uh, and we hope that the strategy, strategy excuse me, that come out of today's event will help all of us as we think about uh, the upcoming open enrollment period, what we want to be doing on the ground in communities across the country to make sure that young people know about new affordable coverage options. So we're thrilled that Young Invincibles was included in this event today, and for all the work that you in the room have done over the years to make sure that millennials have access to coverage. Thank you so much for that work. Uh, we're really looking forward to partnering with you uh, this open enrollment period. And so with that, I'd like to introduce a key architect of the ACA's implementation. We're so grateful for all of the work that the Department of Health and Human Services uh, has, has undertaken over the last few years uh, to reach young people and really connect them to coverage. Um, so it's my great delight to introduce a champion of the ACA, a champion of coverage, Secretary, Secretary Sylvia Matthews Burwell. Thank you. Good morning.
morning and thank you. Thank you, Jen. I understand that we'll also be joined today by our chief of staff, our great chief of staff, Dennis McDonough. And I'm not really sure that Dennis and I fit the textbook definition of young invincibles. As a matter of fact, that's actually what some young invincibles from Team Blue told us yesterday at the pokey stop. Um, but we do, we not, may not be young invincibles, but we do share a commitment to the health of young people and a belief that they can do amazing things. And Senator Robert Kennedy shared that belief too. And it's why he told an audience at the University of Cape Town, quote, it's a revolutionary world we live in, and thus it is young people who must take the lead. So I wanna thank Jen and her colleagues at Young Invincibles and all of the youth advocates that are here today for taking that lead. You don't have to look very far to see all that young folks have accomplished. It was young people knocking on doors and talking to their neighbors who led to the movement for healthcare reform. It was young staffers in the halls of Congress and state legislatures who channeled the movement into actual legislation. And when the Affordable Care Act passed, it was young people in communities across the country who got the word out that coverage is finally within reach. And as a fan of data, I like to put the progress into numbers. Thanks to the Affordable Care Act, 20 million more Americans have health insurance. Our nation's uninsured rate has dropped to 8.6%, and that's the lowest rate in our nation's history. And for the roughly 150 million Americans who get coverage through their employer, premium growth has slowed. Five out of the last six years have seen the slowest growth on record. One of the most powerful numbers is zero. Today, no American can be denied coverage because of pre-existing conditions like cancer. And no insurance company can impose annual or lifetime limits on your coverage. This is real progress. There's a mother who can rest a little easier knowing the fact that she beat breast cancer a few years ago doesn't mean that she won't be able to get health coverage now. Or there's a father who can worry a little less about his daughter's graduation from college because he knows she can stay on his plan until she's 26. Real lives are better off, and thanks to this law, and it's thanks to your all's work. But we still have more work ahead, and young adults have had the highest uninsured rate before the Affordable Care Act, and they've seen the largest drop in the uninsured rates of any age group, but still, as we'll discuss more today and throughout the day, young adults are still more likely than any other group to be uninsured. And that's a huge missed opportunity, especially because coverage is in their reach. The Commonwealth Fund found that more than nine out of 10 uninsured young adults who are eligible for the marketplace could also be eligible for tax credits to help make that coverage more affordable. And getting covered would protect them from catastrophic costs if they get in an accident or contract a serious illness. It could help them stay in school and get their degree and be a stepping stone to that dream job. Coverage is an investment in the future, a down payment for a healthy and productive life. So one of our top priorities at the Department of Health and Human Services is making sure that young people get covered. And during this open enrollment, we're going to pull out all the stops to do just that. And right now, we're putting the finishing touches on our plans to deliver the strongest open enrollment yet. Over the next several weeks, you're going to see a series of announcements from us about what's new, what's better, and what to expect during this open enrollment. We'll unveil some of the new tools for consumers, new outreach tactics, and targeting strategies, and more information about continued access to affordable coverage. Today's announcement is the first in this series, and it details our campaign to enroll young adults. In June, the administration announced some of the ways we're going to be working to reach young people. Our administration is getting information to filers who paid the fee for going uninsured. And we're refining our emails to get young adults the information they need, when they need it, where they need it. Today, we're going to announce some new steps. For the first time, Open enrollment will feature paid partnerships with online platforms that are on the cutting edge, reaching young people when they're most likely to be plugged into media and entertainment. For example, we're going to work with Twitch, a live streaming platform that has more than 100 million visitors each year. 
We're also going to work with advocates to host conversations that connect enrollment with the real life health discussions that young people actually have every day. We'll work to maintain our record of success with longtime enrollment partners like many of you here today. And we'll even head back to school. And we're going to hear from the Secretary of Education, John King, today. And he's going to share some information about a new effort to help enroll on college campuses during this open enrollment. And if we're going to drive millions of young people to healthcare.gov, we have to make sure that the user experience works for them. And one way we're going to do this is through better mobile optimization. We want the experience of shopping for coverage on a phone or a tablet to be easier than ever. We're making the navigation better so it's easier to compare plans and shop around better than ever before. No more clicking into tiny boxes or zooming into tiny font. We want healthcare.gov to meet young people where they are, and often that's on their phone. We're working together. We're going to help millions of young people realize that healthcare.gov is an option for them. We'll help them see that coverage is accessible and affordable. And if we all can work together, we can help millions of young people find the coverage they need. So here's our ask of all of you all today. Engage in the discussions we're going to have here today. We've got panels to discuss the trends around millennial enrollment and the ground that we still have to cover. Share your best, I best ideas, your lessons learned, and then when open enrollment kicks off on November 1st, let's all hit the ground running. We need your energy and your effort throughout open enrollment but especially during Young Enrollment Day and Young Invincibles Week of action. Become a familiar face on local television, make your voice heard on the local radio stations, and spell out in your local newspaper why coverage is so important. And of course, no millennial outreach would be complete without a hashtag, and as Jen mentioned, ours will be hashtag healthy adulting. With trusted voices in social media promoting this campaign and all of you, we could get this message out to almost 5 million people through social media. We'll be there working with you every step of the way. So in closing, I want to thank you for all that you have done and all that you're going to do to help our nation's young people. Just last week when President Obama was up at the United Nations General Assembly, he chose that moment to highlight this generation of young people. He said that young adults today with unprecedented access to information about people and places far from their own have what he called an understanding unique in human history that their future is bound with the fates of other human beings on the other side of the world. And just to be clear, other human beings, he wasn't re just referring to those kids from Stranger Things or Hiddle Swift. Though I should emphasize that it is important to stay covered whether you're starting a new celebrity couple or planning a trip to the upside down. So let's make sure folks get the coverage they need and the care that they deserve. Let's build that stronger future together. Thank you all and looking forward to a great open enrollment. Thank you so much, Secretary Burwell. Um, now I'd like to call up someone who has been an incredible advocate for young people uh, around the country, uh, focused on making sure from cradle to career our young people have the best learning experience possible. But he also understands the importance of making sure that our young people and their families are healthy and how important that is in making sure that they can learn while they're in school. So with that, let me call up Secretary King, our Secretary of the Department of Education. Thanks so much, Kyle. Good morning, everybody. I'm pleased to join uh, Jen Mishori and Secretary Burwell for this morning's conversation and grateful to all of you for being here. From the beginning of the administration, the President has set out as a priority ensuring that all young people have access to quality health care and quality education. Certainly, the Education Department, we are focused on equity and excellence throughout our education system from early learning through K through 12 into higher education. But we know that health is central to that work. We know, for example, and any teacher or professor would tell you, that students who are sick or in pain or worried about a chronic health condition and their treatment are less able to focus on their education. 
And so for us, we know that we have to ensure that students have quality health to ensure that they're able to take advantage of the educational opportunities available to them. We've worked closely with the Health and Human Services Department on trying to help improve access to health care for our pre-K through 12th grade students. We focused on providing tools to schools on helping students get enrolled in health care when they're participating in the school enrollment process, helping schools launch school-based health clinics and to provide health care and mental health services at school. But we can't stop when students turn 18. And we know that students who are in college need access to quality health care. If they aren't getting access to quality health care, that can derail their college education. We also know, partly because of efforts of this administration, the college population looks different today. College is accessible to more people. We have more working adults who are returning to school, single moms who are trying to advance in their careers while balancing home, work, and college. Uh, veterans who are returning and seeking educational opportunities. And we've got to make sure that all of the folks who are in our colleges and universities have access to quality health care. We've got an effort called Single Stop that has made real progress on uh, 28 campuses, community colleges and four-year colleges in nine states. Through Single Stop, higher education students get access to uh, guidance around accessing health care, housing, addressing issues of food insecurity, and we're seeing real progress with single stop. We want to expand that effort by asking what if all colleges and universities were committed to ensuring that all students had access to quality health care. And so today we are launching the White House Healthy Campus Challenge. The idea is that college campuses would work with their students and their local communities to make sure that students understand the health care options available to them. Uh, we'd be looking for campuses to mobilize students, faculty, alumni, local community leaders, their, their staff, uh, to get students aware of the open enrollment period. Uh, we expect folks to use email notification, social media outreach to host uh, in-person enrollment events, and to do everything they can to make sure that every student is enrolled in quality health care. Uh, we're looking for colleges and universities to apply by November 1st to participate in the Healthy Campus Challenge. Uh, I hope everyone is writing that down. I was a high school social studies teacher, so I'm always <laughs> watching to see if folks are taking good notes. Uh, November 1st would be the deadline for the campus challenge and the idea would be that campuses would implement these steps by mid-December. Uh, let us know they would get um, recognized as Healthy Campus Challenge participants and there would be a lottery of sorts to have a uh, campus come to an event in January here at the White House to celebrate the work on enrollment. Uh, so we're looking to you to be our partners in that work. Uh, we think we can make a huge difference for young people, young parents who want to make sure that they are advancing their education but at the same time need to have access to health care. Uh, thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your partnership. I think all of us have to acknowledge that one of our biggest challenges, whether it's in education or health care, is reaching those who are most at risk. Uh, oftentimes, uh, folks who are juggling the most challenges in their lives are least likely to take advantage of access to educational opportunity or health care opportunities. We've got to together overcome those obstacles to equity. Uh, thanks again for the opportunity to join you. Thank you so much, Mr. Secretary. And I would just add, there's really nothing more impactful than an energized and engaged campus, whether it's a community college or a four-year college. Uh, those administrators and those students can do so much in their communities and on their campuses to make sure young people ha have an understanding of the healthcare options that are available to them. So, so excited about the Healthy Campus Challenge. And uh, we're gonna be reaching out to colleges and universities across the country uh, to make sure that they sign up and we're excited to have them join. Uh, with that, we're going to move on to our first panel discussion so that you all can hear from some of the experts who have doing, been doing outreach on enrollment, but also uh, uh, folks who uh, work in the business space and who you know, are, are dealing with their entrepreneurs and, uh, and their users across the country who are taking advantage of some of the healthcare options that are now available. Uh, so with that, I want to call up our panelists. Our moderator for the panel is Ann Filippic, uh, president of Enroll America. And Enroll America, uh, like Young, Young Invincibles, has just been an unbelievable partner of ours in making sure we are spreading the word about open enrollment. So huge thanks to Enroll. 
Uh, Adam Fox, Director of Strategic Engagement for the Colorado Consumer Health Initiative. Adam, come on up. Um, Brad Jenkins, uh, Managing Director of Funny or Die, and I'm glad that Brad wore his millennial outfit for the, uh, the panel today. Um, and Jonathan Swanson, uh, who is President of Thumbtack, uh, will join us up here as well. And I'll kick things over to you. There we go. All right, try that again. Um, just uh, as I was saying, um, first just want to say um, hello to everyone. Uh, lots of familiar faces in the crowd, and I know many tuning in from home as well, um, who are doing really incredible work uh, in communities, um, engaging young people and, and all of the uninsured uh, in our neighborhoods about the opportunities uh, ahead of us. Um, also just want to say thank you to Secretary Burwell, Secretary King, and, and the White House for the opportunity to come together and gather on this uh, important topic. We have some all-stars here that I will introduce in a moment, um, but before we get that, just want to share a little bit from the Enroll America America perspective of why this is such an important moment that we are in. Um, as we enter the fourth open enrollment period on November 1st, we know two things are true. One is that we have made incredible progress, but two is that we have a lot of work left to do. Um, the Commonwealth Fund put out some research earlier this year um, that, that really shows that that progress is real. Um, we know that in the summer of 2013, 28 percent of young people were uninsured, but in spring of this year, just a few years later, that number had dropped by 10 percent um, down to 18 percent. Um, that is just an incredible shift in a few years. But we also know that when we look at the remaining uninsured, uh, that nearly half, 48 percent, are, uh, are young people between the ages of 19 and 34. So while, as I've said, while we've made great progress, we have a lot of work to do. At Enroll America, we are really proud of the role that we've been able to play in this. We've worked hard to understand what motivates young people um, as they are making their healthcare decisions and how best to get them the information that they need to successfully enroll in coverage. Uh, we've worked closely with amazing partners, again, many here today, um, others like Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, um, community colleges um, like Miami-Dade, um, they've been real leaders in this effort, as well as many other community colleges across the country. Uh, and we've even been working with local school districts to reach young parents of children and educate them about their options. We've also launched some online tools, tools that are consumer facing and available to our partners to embed at their websites as well. Um, our coverage calculator, um, which is just so important to help uh, young people understand that there really are affordable options out there. Our Get Covered Connector to help consumers find free local in-person application assistance. And our Get Covered Plan Explorer, which is a new tool um, that, that helps um, people compare the plans available to them and really choose the one that's right for them and their budget. And the last thing I'll note before I do introduce these folks um, is that uh, Enroll America is also really proud to recently to have launched along with partners HHS, Out to Enroll, and Young Invincibles are My Campus, Our Coverage campaign, um, which is all about assisting partners with practical, innovative, and helpful outreach tactics to educate parents and students in the work that we're all here to do. So we have a toolkit online. Um, if you haven't seen it, you can go to our website, enrollamerica.org um, slash MCOC, My Campus, Our Coverage, um, and uh, get more information there. So with that, um, I'm really excited for the conversation that we're going to have here today. Um, again, we are, at Enroll America are proud of what we've accomplished, but we have all done this together um, with uh, the, the partnership of those here uh, and, and those all across the country. So I'm going to take a moment just to introduce each of our speakers, um, and then we will have the chance to hear from them about the work that they're doing. Um, so first, to my, to my left, we have um, Adam Fox. Adam is the Director of Strategic Engagement at the Colorado Consumer Health Initiative. Um, and as the Director of Strategic Engagement, Adam oversees all communications, media, and engagement strategies to ensure CCHI's policy and education goals are achieved. Uh, and I can tell you that they have done really incredible work, uh, real leaders in the state of Colorado, but also uh, in terms of the national effort. Uh, I'm sure we'll hear from Adam a little bit about the the Got Insurance campaign that they ran in the first enrollment uh, period uh, to reach young people, and also the, the continued creative outreach approaches they've taken since then. 
Um, we also have um, my old friend Brad Jenkins. Um, Brad is uh, the, the managing director and ex executive producer of Funny or Die DC. Uh, in addition to creating content uh, under, under Brad's direction, Funny or Die DC provides consulting services on talent outreach, uh, writing and branding strategies for a range of clients. Um, and folks may remember uh, also in the first enrollment period um, the Between Two Ferns episode uh, with President Obama. Uh, at the time, Brad was working at the White House but was very closely involved in making that happen. So perhaps we can get a little behind the scene peek of how that came to be. Um, uh, next to Brad, we have Kyla King. Um, Kyla is the marketing manager at Priority Health. Um, there she manages strategic marketing for the ACA Marketplace Individual Business um, at, at Priority Health, which is a not-for-profit Michigan health plan. So she has been doing work to enroll young people um, since healthcare.gov launched in 2013. Um, and finally, we have Jonathan Swanson. Uh, Jonathan is the president of Thumbtack. Um, and as co-founder and president of Thumbtack, he leads a service that makes that helps consumers to find and hire local service prof professionals, such as photographers, tutors, and gardeners. Uh, and I'm, I'm excited Jonathan's here to, I think, represent uh, an industry that we can really tap in to reach young people. So um, with that, uh, I will also note, I have some questions for these guys, but um, really hope um, we can open up uh, to, to the audience uh, to get questions from you as well. So, so keep thinking as, we, as we're talking if there's anything that comes to mind. So I think to get started, um, I'd really like to start with Kyla and Adam. Um, you represent um, sort of different um, pieces of the puzzle in the work that we do, um, but both really critical. And, and I um, imagine from the last few years, you have learned a lot uh, in the work that you've done. So um, perhaps, uh, Adam, we can start with you. Can you just for a few minutes give us a, a quick overview of the work that you've done um, and some of the lessons that you've learned? Of course. Thank you, Anne. Uh, so I do have a couple slides here uh, to give you some visuals. Um, so a lot of our work at the Colorado Consumer Health Initiative for Millennial Outreach and Enrollment has really been around the communications sphere, uh, trying to use some creative digital and social media campaigns to help inform young adults about their coverage options. So I'm going to talk about a few examples uh, of our work and how that has been successful. Uh, the first and uh, probably most recognizable is our Got Insurance campaign. Uh, going into the first open enrollment period, we knew that there was a huge awareness gap uh, about the new health insurance marketplaces and health coverage options that were available, especially among young adults. Um, and yes, this campaign was a, a bit ridiculous and a bit controversial, um, but it was hugely successful. Uh, the campaign website had over 25 million hits, we garnered over half a million dollars worth of earned media coverage in everything from GQ and Women's Magazine to the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, BuzzFeed, The Daily Show, and every cable news channel under the sun. Um, next slide, please. So, but we can't go viral every time. Um, so we've focused on using stories like these uh, to really communicate from a young adult's perspective how health insurance enrollment makes a difference. Um, for instance, Aubrey's story on your left-hand side really demonstrates why health insurance coverage is important, even when you think you're healthy. Uh, she had no health issues, uh, and she was out for a run one day when her femur inexplicably snapped. Um, and thankfully, she was covered because she was able to stay on her parents' plan. Um, so we've been trying to leverage stories like that to make sure that young adults know the value of health insurance. Next. So this year we've really been focusing on trying to create some videos because video is king in the digital space. Um, and we've launched several uh, rap videos to try to reach young adults. The first being our open enrollment rap uh, that we launched uh, during the final 10 days of open enrollment. Uh, we did that because that's when the data shows most millennials actually enroll. That's when they're most receptive to messages about enrollment. Um, so we focused on that. And the second one, our special enrollment wrap video, uh, we released in May and worked with a variety of partners in our state to get that out there. Um, and it was very successful and we've now adapted it for partners in other states including California, Pennsylvania, and Wyoming. 
But enrollment efforts aren't necessarily enough. Uh, we have to really try to do more to make sure that millennials understand how their health insurance works, how to use it effectively, and that they stay covered, which is why we launched in 2014 our health insurance literacy tool called CoveredU.org. También en español, seguro tú.org. And this health insurance tool is really designed to be interactive. It uses uh, scenarios that people can choose, so it's kind of a choose-your-own-adventure uh, website, and walks people through scenarios that contextualize health insurance terms, demonstrates the value, or the um, how the venue of care can influence somebody's cost, and it compares what their costs may end up being if they go without insurance. So trying to get to that value proposition. Um, and so, like everywhere else in the country, we've made a lot of progress. Um, slide, please. Uh, we've made a lot of progress. We have reduced our uninsured rate uh, among, among millennials by half uh, to around 12 or 13 percent. Um, but we've got a lot more work to do. Um, and I look forward to sharing more lessons and stories with you during Q&A. Wonderful. Thank you, Adam. And I'd love to pass it along to Kyla as well, um, representing the, the nonprofit health plan um, world. Uh, and through that, you've really been on the leading edge of an evolving industry that is thinking about new ways to, to target your audience and support them through the enrollment process. Um, so Kyla, why don't you tell us a little bit about your work? So um, we are not-for-profit, and we're a different kind of health plan. Oh. Can you hear me now? <laughs> OK. <laughs> Uh, we're a not-for-profit, and we're a different kind of health plan. Some insurance companies focus on processing claims. We're very focused on improving the health and lives of our members so that they can have uh, access to affordable care. So we are really excited to be embarking on another successful open enrollment. And the first thing that we did to start to try to understand an outreach to young people was to understand the consumer. And what we learned was, you know, you guys love your phones and you do everything on your phones and you expect everything to be mobile so you probably joke that you spend more time tweeting and texting and emailing than you do talking face to face so we work to engage with things like our healthy selfie um, sweepstakes that's a partnership that we've done with the detroit red wings and that's players and coaches they post a healthy selfie they encourage their followers to post a healthy selfie and then those people are entered for a chance to win um, tickets to the red wing games and then the other thing we did was uh, make sure that we understand what motivates uh, a young person to buy health insurance and they want it to be hassle free they expect to be rewarded you love to be rewarded for doing the right thing and you expect a health plan that would partner with you so we um, have three strategies that we've been using that have been pretty successful for us one of them is those rewards in, in incentives to help lower out-of-pocket costs we created a tool called the cost estimator it's an online tool, it's really innovative, and it's only available to our members, and it allows you to go in and calculate your out-of-pocket costs for common procedures like a, a lab or a surgery, and you can pick the facility you wanna to go to, and if that facility is not charging a fair market price, we'll show you other facilities in the area that do charge a fair market price. And you can go there and you can pay less on your deductible and less out-of-pocket. And the reason we think that's important, we were the first health plan in Michigan to show this kind of pricing information to our members is because you never knew the price of health care before. You wouldn't buy a car without knowing the cost. You would not buy a refrigerator without knowing the cost. But in health care, that refrigerator was sitting in your house. You didn't know the color. You didn't know if it made ice, but you had a bill for it. So we decided people needed to be engaged in their health care. And we took it one step further by creating priority rewards which is um, it leverages the, the power of our cost estimate, estimator, and this is how it works. Um, say you hurt your knee and you need to get a knee scope. So you go into the cost estimator and you shop around for facilities, and if you go and get that service at a facility that's at fair market price or below, we will send you a cash reward in the form of a Visa gift card for $50 to $200, um, depending on the service, that you can use to help cover those out-of-pocket costs. And we know that by helping people get this kind of information, it helps them 
understand their benefits and lower their costs. The, the second thing that we did is we added services to our plans that we know young people care about and will find more value in the, the marketplace. So we were the first health plan in Michigan to fully cover medically necessary acupuncture and med medically necessary massage therapy in our marketplace plans. And then of course we've invested in technology because millennials expect it. We have a web friendly, mobile friendly website and we also um, have an app on our phones that you can put on your phone to get your digital ID card. You can schedule a virtual video doctor visit or talk to a doctor by secure email. And if you shop for a plan on our website, we've made it easy for you to hop out to healthcare.gov get a subsidy if you qualify, and then come back and finish enrolling with us without having to go to different websites. And I only brought one slide with me today because we know these strategies are working. Our ACA population is getting younger. And these two pie charts represent our 2015 open enrollment and then our 2016. And if you see, in the 26 to 34 um, age range, we went from 12% in 2015 to two points in just one year, we improved to 14%. And in the 18 to 25%, we stayed at 9% both years, but last year we brought in more people. So the raw numbers behind that 9% represent more people. So we're really excited. We're gonna keep building on these strategies and thank you for having us today. We're very thrilled to be here. Thank you, Kyla. I think there's a lot of great stuff in what you just talked through, Kyla, and one of the thing that re things that really resonated with me was your focus on cost and affordability, and that is something that we have learned at Enroll America, and this is true not just for young people, um, really the, the, the general population, but especially young people. If they're going to take actions to enroll, they need tools that help them understand that this is affordable and what it specifically means for their budget. So it's, it's really neat to hear from the health plan perspective how you're approaching that. Um, well, as I said, I think Kyla and Adam have some, some really neat experiences here that I'd like to come back to uh, in a few minutes to dig in further. Um, but before we do that, I, I do want to hear from Brad and Jonathan. Um, Brad, um, you know, through your work at Funny or Die, you definitely know a thing or two about engaging young people and kind of getting their attention. Uh, I'm wondering, um, from your perspective, as you, uh, I know you haven't been as close to enrollment specifically in the last couple years, um, but you certainly know how to engage audience and I think you learned some lessons from um, that between two ferns um, video that 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 you um, helped make happen what what would you suggest we be thinking about as we're working to continue to make progress with this group uh, yeah so first off uh, I used to work for Ann Flippick here at the White House so this is kind of awesome for me uh, and secondly I used to work with Kyle and Bess in the back so this is like doubly cool um, <laughs> So, and it, it's incredible. I think it's funny, you know, because I, was at, I work at Funny or Die, and we had this great video. I get asked to talk a lot about healthcare enrollment, and I'm always like, you got to just invite Ann Philippic, because <laughs> she's the one who actually does it. We just made a silly video. Um, no, I think actually, and it's, uh, it's a good question, I think uh, a line that Secretary Burwell had in her remarks actually hits it na the nail on the head um, and the way that we think about content that we create at Funny or Die and it's actually the idea of organizing, right? I mean, Ann and I used to work for uh, then Senator Obama in 2008. Uh, what we knew was yard signs don't get kids to vote, right? You know that story where you're in the field office and everyone's like, we need more yard signs. Um, yard signs don't can't create conversations, right? Yard signs don't knock on doors and uh, connect why getting out to vote is so important to your community or to your block or to your town. Um, the, the content that we create or Funny or Die is meant to be shared, right? So the video, the Between Two Ferns video, there was no money behind that, right? There, was, there wasn't tens of millions of dollars of paid media or radio or any of that stuff. Um, it was just a really funny video um, that was where young people are, so it's all on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, et cetera, uh, and it was viewed 40 million times, um, and the traffic went up 40% to healthcare.gov, um, and the reason why was because we were meeting young people where they were, right, and we were also getting the content in the hands of these incredible organizers that, I mean, you guys do the real work. I feel like we're like the air control, right? We're, we're, we have the ability to make things much bigger with celebrities and with really funny writers from SNL and these great uh, comedy institutions. So I think that um, what Adam laid out is, is spot on when 
you're thinking about um, getting the word out, um, my advice to you is, and what I've learned at Funny or Die is, do the unexpected, right? Do what you think your friend would actually want to click on. Like, you, you should always have your own sort of internal focus group. I have that because I have a team of writers that are like, the average age is like 23. <laughs> so they know what is funny and they know what kids are going to want to click on. Um, and when we, that first year of enrollment, I think there was a lot of attention paid to Between Two Ferns. What was less talked about was we did like six videos um, and we we did a lot of tests. We did a video with Jennifer Hudson that targeted young African-American women. We did a video with Eddie George, uh, the former NFL player that targeted uh, young men who watched football, right? Um, we did a video, a fail video of kids just hitting their heads, falling down on their skateboard. Um, we we're clearly targeting millennials there. So we were doing tests, we were figuring out what worked and what didn't work. Um, and what I would say is, you made a very good point, video is king. I think you guys probably all know this. Um, funny or die, you know, people sort of think that um, it's an impossible thing to work with us. That's not true. Uh, my email address is bjenkins at funnierdie.com. We're ready to be hired to work on your videos for you uh, and to get great celebrities and great influencers to do this content. But you guys really, you know how to reach your people. This is the other thing I will say, right? You guys probably work all across the country. Um, a video that works in Colorado is not going to work in Nevada, right? So be very clear on your target demographic. Be very clear on the, who the people in your community is going to work. A lot of times people come to Funny or Die and they're like, we want Brad Pitt. And we're like, for what? They're like, <laughs> to reach 19-year-olds. And we're like, you know what? Brad Pitt doesn't re reach 19-year-olds. Um, YouTube stars do. Um, or Instagram stars. Or Vine stars. Or in some cases, you know what's going to reach 19-year-olds in your state? A kid that graduated from your community who's probably doing great things in their community. Like, th th there are incredible influencers that you can get to that you don't need funny or die for. Um, what we can do, uh, which is what I would urge everyone to think about, is you know, the one plug for funny or die is we just reach, uh, I was gonna curse, but I'm at the White House, so I won't, but a lot of people, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? We reach 40 million people on social media. So what we can do is turbocharge uh, and leverage our existing networks with your great data, your great um, influencers, your great organizers on the ground. And, and I think that the other thing I will learn straight from Ann Philippic is it's a team effort, right? Like you can't, it doesn't work as we learned. Uh, you can have really great social media and really great people on the ground, but if the website doesn't work, I think we remember that, uh, no one's gonna get enrolled. Um, and it's, this, it's the same case for everything that we're thinking about. Um, making sure that you have, if you can't get to faith leaders, figure out a way to get to faith leaders. If you can't get to celebrities, call me. I'm happy to help. Um, but, um, you know, Funny or Die is just, a, I would say, a very, very small piece of the puzzle. Um, and then the last thing I'll say is, um, and I tell all of our partners this, um, you would be surprised how powerful you guys are. Right, like our successful campaigns really are all about the partner. We really just help package it, but the partner who's smart, the partner who's done the research like Adam did, um, and the partner who's also willing to try a lot of different fun things, because you're not gonna do it with one silver bullet. Maybe with Between Two Ferns, but Zach, unfortunately, can't do a video with everyone. Um, but, uh, but you know, you guys have partners you, in this room, I would say. I, the other thing, last thing I'll say, I know I'm going on and on and on. Anne's like, Brad. Um, <laughs> but the, the one thing I learned at the White House is sometimes these events here, like it's not so much us talking, like whatever. It's the person next to you, right? It's the connective tissue that the White House creates where you guys are the ones really doing the work. So please talk to, talk to each other. Um, get each other's business cards, tweet at each other, follow each other on Facebook, become best friends, because we're all in this uh, as a team and we're all doing this together. Um, that's my cheesy, wearing my cheesy White House hat.
um, back Thank to Thank you, Brad. <laughs> and I love the fact that even though you're now like, you know, rubbing elbows with celebrities, you're still talking about community organizing and Absolutely. know that that is where, you know, the rubber meets the road. And, and I think hearing you talk reminded me that so much of this is about how do we create an echo chamber, right? Like, how do we make it so they're on Facebook and seeing a video, but they're going to their, you know, getting an email from their community college and hearing from their mom about the need to enroll um, coming November 1st. Um, and I think, you know, you, re you really touched on that. So that, I think that's a big part of the, the challenge we have ahead. Okay, um, uh, Jonathan, like, let, love to, thanks for being patient as we worked our way down the table. Um, you know, I was really excited to hear you were going to be on this panel, and, and one of those reasons um, is last year I had one of those organi organizing aha moments where I was reading research um, that um, Perry Undum had done um, through um, support from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, and there was a statistic that was that of the remaining uninsured who, who are employed, 88% of them are hourly workers. And it makes sense, right? A lot of full-time workers get coverage through their employer. So that's not, that's not a, a crazy thing to, to consider, but what it sort of, the light bulb that went off out in my head is the network that you can tap into. When you think about hourly workers as a real um, uh, community uh, and think about, especially in this day of age and age with the gig economy and, um, uh, and you know, all that's coming uh, together in that space, that there are some real paths we can go down to reach that audience. Um, and it seems that Thumbtack is is one of those um, so I'd love to hear from you um, you know what what would you say that thumbtack pros are telling you about healthcare so far um, and what can we all do to help them understand their options better awesome uh, well thanks for having us Anne and Kyle um, this is cool for me to be here uh, before thumbtack I actually was a White House staffer uh, worked on the economic team so uh, cool to be back uh, especially now that they don't make me wear a tight uh, a tie and suit uh, anymore <laughs> Um, so uh, before talking about Thumbtack's pros, I think uh, helpful to tell a uh, Thumbtack story uh, really quickly. Um, so Thumbtack helps you hire uh, the right professional for all of life's projects. So it can help you find a painter for your house, a uh, caterer for an event like this, uh, a tutor for your child. Uh, much the same way you go to Amazon to buy any product, uh, you can go to Thumbtack to hire uh, any professional. Uh, but five years ago, Thumbtack was basically just an idea. We had no money, no traction. Uh, like many young entrepreneurs, uh, we started in a house. Uh, had so little space in this house, I actually slept in a closet uh, for two years. Uh, so I literally came out of the closet every morning uh, for, for two years. Uh, but fast forward today, we've now raised $275 million, doing a billion dollars in marketplace volume, uh, have a thousand team members uh, from Salt Lake, uh, San Francisco, and the Philippines. Uh, and most importantly, we're helping 250,000 uh, small businesses, professionals, uh, start and grow uh, their small business for the first time. Um, uh, like many small business owners, uh, Thumbtack has been through lots of ups and downs. Uh, we had lots of hard times, times where we couldn't raise money, we weren't growing as quickly as we wanted. Um, you know, the first time we went to raise venture capital, we pitched 44 investors, got 44 no's. Uh, it was really hard, almost ran out of money. Uh, my partners and I uh, worked for a couple of years without salary. Um, and, uh, you know, as hard as it has been for Thumbtack, uh, it's much harder for most professionals, most small business uh, owners. It's really tough to be a small business owner because you have all these ups and downs, all these roadblocks, um, and you have to not only be good at your craft, whether that's being a personal trainer or a DJ, you have to be good at a lot of other things. You have to be good at marketing and invoicing and uh, finance uh, and a dozen other things. Uh, and one of the most expensive parts of running a small business, uh, one of the biggest roadblocks, is healthcare. So, uh, we surveyed our 250,000 professionals, uh, and one in three said that healthcare uh, was a major concern for them. Uh, you know, many uh, of our young professionals find that healthcare is an obstacle to starting a small business. Uh, many of our uh, small business owners on Thumbtack, even today, still continue to struggle to get access to healthcare. Uh, our survey indicates that uh, our small business owners are much more uninsured than the general population uh, at large. Um, but by decoupling benefits, uh, from the traditional uh, employment arrangement. Uh, the ACA has been a big impact in lots of our professionals' lives, especially young uh, professionals. So pros that are 25 or under are twice as likely to get health insurance through a family member, uh, which is now possible uh, because ACA. Uh, one of our entrepreneurs, a photographer named Joe uh, in Maryland, uh, told us that before Obamacare, I never would have been able to start uh, my own small business. Um, so starting a small business is hard, it's stressful, uh, lots of our pros say that it feels like the weight 
of the world is on their shoulders. So anything we can do to remove health care from their list of worries uh, will enable more young uh, pros to start their small business. And that's something uh, we're really excited about at Thumbtack and uh, why we're excited to be here today. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, and again, I'm going to open it up for questions in just a few minutes. But um, I think one thing I'd, I'd love to explore a little bit, we've, we've talked um, so far, I think, a lot about um, different avenues to reach young people, different tactics to use. Um, one of the things I, I'm interested in, in talking a little bit about is the specific messages that we've learned, um, and especially Kyla and Adam, but, but certainly Brad and Jonathan, if you have thoughts too. Um, I'm curious if, is, if there has been any evolution um, in the marketing campaigns that you ha all have run in terms of, um, you know, what the, the top line message is that you're using from, from you know, back, back in 2013 when we were just launching this to a few years in. You know, do we need to be talking about this differently or are the same, same old messages, the tried and true messages where we should be focusing? Um, I'll start. I think uh, it's been financial assistance since day one for, for young adults um, and still is. I think how it's messaged has changed. Um, we've gotten a lot more specific and our marketplace has gotten a lot more specific of trying to target people exactly where they are on a zip code basis and say, hey, you're, the average tax credit for somebody your age is X and that's how much you could be saving on your health insurance. So being a lot more specific about what it really means for somebody's pocketbook, I think is far more effective. Mm -hmm. I think we've also started using the penalty more um, as it has increased and become a more significant factor. Um, yeah, it's something that a lot of people don't like to talk about in kind of the health advocacy space, but it's a motivator. Um, and if you message it well, if you tie a little bit of humor to it, if you say don't pay something for nothing, those kinds of messages start to, to, to resonate. Mm -hmm. Tyler, how about you? He's exactly right. We've talked a lot more about, you know, don't leave money on the table. People don't realize that, I mean, I think you can be a family of four and make $94,000 or something like that a year and you can still get a subsidy so in a lot of our marketing that we target in digital media and, and um, direct mail we do put that in there so that they can see it's very relatable and you're leaving money on the table you can get help with this the other thing that we have started doing too is making sure that they know they're gonna get help with figuring out and, and paying for their out-of-pocket costs and we have really hit at the affordability messaging because we understand you know, this needs to be affordable for everybody. Um, for Funny or Die, I think we, uh, a lot of our work that first year was just trying to take the heat off of it. If we remember, it was so partisan. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you had two things. You had, you know, half a billion dollars worth of negative advertising, calling Obamacare like the worst thing since Satan or something. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then you had a website that didn't work, right? And so... We just tried to find uh, opportunities at humor that just took the heat off of that stuff and just reminded people that healthcare is just about you as a person and your choices. It has nothing to do with red team, blue team, or who you wanted to vote for. It's about do you have health care? <laughs> because you should probably have it. Um, and I think that now that we've just had such remarkable success thanks to these guys and you all in the room the way that we're thinking about it for this enrollment period is exactly what you just described i think it's more about like any other product like funny or die people don't realize we're we're a comedy company and we produce tv shows and we produce movies and comedy festivals um, but a lot of what we do is we do branded entertainment so we do corporate campaigns for all of our fortune 500 friends um, so we're used to product branding with comedy and I feel like now that we've passed sort of the partisan bickering and we're getting down to oh no wait this is just another product in the marketplace we can start talking more about cost we can start talking more about sort of you know I like the idea of just hey like you're you're gonna have to pay something <laughs> you might as well you might as well get care for it and then also using the other uh, great thing that Adam said was the idea of, of really using organizing hooks. So I love the idea of a national um, enrollment day, but really using those hooks of 
the enrollment deadline is two weeks away. So we really, funny or die, like we, our release schedule is always sort of hooked around um, what are these moments that are going to drive traffic. So um, using like the last week or the last two weeks as, um, as an opportunity to, to launch a big video will be something that we'll do as well. I definitely think the, the concept of getting this out of the political space, you know, you, you do think of the first enrollment period, and I think that was a real challenge we had. Um, and, and for consumers, too, most of them, you know, research had shown in early 2013 that, that most had heard of Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act, but that was where their knowledge stopped. They hadn't heard of the fact that there was even a health insurance marketplace. Um, and I think that, um, you know, people often ask me how much the politics gets in the way. And I, I tell them the reality is if you're, if you're not approaching this from a political point of view, the consumer isn't either. Because right. to them, this is about their family. This is about, um, you know, getting them the, the financial security, the, the peace of mind that comes with having health insurance. And I, I think it has been really powerful to see the messaging evolve more in that direction, um, which I do think is what, what is so important. Um, I'll also note, um, Adam, I'm glad you brought up the penalty. I'll be interested what folks in the audience um, have found in terms of approaching that. I, I think that's a great example. In the first year, so many um, groups were very, very hesitant to talk about that. Um, and I think part of that was because of the politics swirling around us. Um, but the truth is, you know, I always say, we shouldn't think of it as a threat. This isn't a threat. This is about giving consumers all of the facts about you know what is in front of them uh, and both um, why they should you know the opportunities in front of them, why they should enroll in health coverage, but also to understand that if they choose not to, there is, this is the law of the land and there's a fine that they're going to have to pay. To me, that is being a good partner to a consumer and making sure that they understand all of these pieces as they're making decisions. Um, so I think that's that's really important. Um, one thing I'd love to, to ask this crew um, before we do open it up um, is we have some different perspectives. A couple of folks who've actually worked in, in the administration um, previously, um, some that are you know implementing and uh, sort of the front lines of implementing um, the you know this administration's top policy priority. I would be interested um, in terms of any recommendations that you all have for um, what the White House and agencies can do to help citizens understand the system. You know, we are in a really interesting moment right now where um, both we have this administration who has this enrollment period um, just days away, but we also have another administration that will be coming in. Um, we're not talking about politics today, but whoever that is um, will have a lot of work to do to continue the progress of the Affordable Care Act. Um, what recommendations do you have for, for, you know, as we are sitting here in the White House, um, for the administration. Jonathan, maybe we can start with you. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, just to echo what Brad said earlier, I think partnering with uh, tech companies like Thumbtack is a great way to pull the politics uh, out of this. Um, you know, Thumbtack is not a political organization. We're a for-profit tech company. Uh, our professionals are Democrats and Republicans uh, and Libertarians. Um, but uh, ACA is now law of the land, and just as Social Security or unemployment benefits is law of the land, um, it is something that we want to help our um, professionals know more about, and our mission is aligned uh, with uh, the ACA, and that our mission is to help more people start small businesses. Healthcare is often an impediment to starting small businesses, uh, and so in that way, our mission is completely aligned, uh, and so we want to empower our pros with that information. There are lots of other uh, tech companies who help uh, people start small businesses or earn income on Airbnb or Uber. Um, and I think one of the challenges is when you're starting a small business or you're go venturing out on your own is you've got a to-do list of 50 things, uh, and healthcare isn't usually at the top of the list. Usually finding my first customer, paying the bills, those things are at the top. And if you can partner with organizations who are at the top of that list, who are helping uh, these uh, young uh, entrepreneurs earn their income, I think that's a great way to deliver the message. And, you know, Thumbtack, we don't have the content. We don't know the best way to explain the system or when or how it works. Um, and I know you guys have the information, so empowering us uh, and other tech uh, companies with that information I think can be a very powerful combination. Great. Thank you. Tyler? I think um, building on things like this, bringing healthy people into the plans and into the risk pool, because that's very important for all of us and for this to be a success. Brad? Um, I agree with Jonathan. I think that there are, um, and the White, I mean, the White House is already doing it because it's an example, but bringing kind of unusual allies, like bringing 
the innovative kind of entrepreneurial spirit of Silicon Valley is a cool thing. I think bringing weird comedians from Funny or Die clearly worked. And we're not the only ones. Um, I mean, I think the president was with Jerry Seinfeld talking about healthcare, and he was with Zach Galifianakis. I think there are other tools in the toolbox, if you will, um, that the White House can employ, not just the president. I think that um, there are other people within the administration that can be doing some fun, unexpected things. Um, I do think that in the, uh, I, you know, I, I sort of, I don't want to say I coined this phrase, but I call it the attention economy. It's like I have this theory of the case that it's, it's all about attention, attention, attention. Um, and I feel like, unfortunately, if the White House wants to break through, it just has to do weird stuff. Um, and I think that there are a couple of candidates, one of whom will, that will be very natural for him, um, and the other uh, that it will not be so much. Um, but I do think whoever takes this um, incredible legacy on, I think the, this White House and the president were very brave, in, in my opinion, um, in getting out there and reaching millennials where they are. And I hope that uh, in order for those enrollment m numbers to keep going up, I think they're going to continue to need to, to do stuff like mm -hmm. that. Again, this yeah, sounds like a plug for doing more funnier die videos, but... Um, <laughs> But no, I mean, working with, uh, with companies like Thumbtack is a great example as well. I, I think I would just add that um, the in-person assistance that is out there is key, and we know that that's another important message. But I think there may be some more creative ways to support those assisters on the ground, um, whether it's connecting them with some of the small tech companies in their area to partner and start to, to work together. Um, I think that there, there are some opportunities to support that on the ground work. And Adam, I'm glad you mentioned that because we've spent a lot of time today talking about online tools. Um, and certainly when you're thinking about reaching a youth audience, that's an important part of it. But we have found, and I think this is, is actually one of the big lessons I think we've learned at Enroll America. You know, I think of 2013 and so many people um, talked about the marketplace, the health insurance marketplace as almost like going to Expedia, right? And it was going to be yeah. this very easy online experience. and putting aside even the joke, the easy joke about, you know, the, the what website not working, the reality is it is a great website now. And there are all of these online tools that are, are all about sort of, um, you know, personalizing the experience. But in many ways, that is about creating something very close to having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone. Like, that's what the tools are about. And there are experts in the community who will sit down with you and have that one-on-one -on -one conversation. And we have found that for the remaining uninsured, in-person assistance is essential. And um, that is actually one of the big recommendations we've made at Enroll America for the next administration is to actually continue to invest uh, and increase the investment in in-person assistance. Because um, as, as those that remain unsure, uh, those that remain uninsured are harder to reach, that, uh, that help of a, an expert in their community is really essential.